What's up and welcome to the channel. My name is Hexshot and thank you guys for joining us for our full review on the FNX 45 Tactical. Uh, we've had this gun for a couple months now. We've ran some suppressors on it and uh, we are ready to give you guys a full detail review on everything we know about it. It is 80 degrees in the middle of December here in South Carolina. A couple of days ago it was in the 30s, 40s. So uh, we are enjoying the weather as of right now. It is always up and down here but uh we're gonna go ahead and do this review, and uh, like I said, pros and cons, shooting. Uh, we also we we are gonna talk about the price as well. Um, I'm gonna tell you if I think this pistol is worth it. Uh, that's something that a lot of people kind of have to uh, justify in their own minds. But we're gonna talk about the features and <clears throat> what leads up to that that price point. Um, and you know we're gonna talk about it all in this one video, and uh, you guys can decide for yourself uh, if it is worth it to you. Uh, let's go ahead and open it up and show you the features on the pistol. First of all, you get this nice bag right from the factory, so that is really great. You don't have to send it off or anything like that, or send off to get it. Uh, it comes like this. So uh, up here, these are not the mounts that actually come with the gun. Those are the ones that came with the uh, Glock 19. Uh, but anyways, you get your uh, paperwork, lock, all that good stuff. You are not going to get a weapon light or a red dot, unfortunately. But what you can do is if you wanna go over to Optics Planet, you can you can actually save money on all these using our discount code over there. Uh, and they already have them at a good price. So if you wanna get one of these for your FNX or uh, red dot, make sure you use those discount codes and save yourself some money. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about what comes in the bag and then we'll go over the features. Uh, you get three 15 round magazines. This is huge. I don't know of any other gun that comes with 15 round magazines. Now keep in mind this is a, a, a pretty big gun but I think the closest one that comes to it is the Glock 21 uh, which has 13 round magazines. So you get three 15 round magazines that's a lot of firepower uh, right there in your hand. Uh, you can see where they lock in right there just that one little uh, one little indentation right there and then you have the uh, base plates on there um, so and then you have two extra magazines right there you have a suppressor pouch so whenever you get your suppressor you can just throw it right in your bag you're going to get back straps all right so whichever way you want to run it some of them come with a hump some of them don't this gun is big enough i didn't need anything else <laughs> to put in my hand we actually put the uh flat uh non-aggressive back strap on there it's the same one that is actually on the front strap if you look at it right there um, and then the aggressive one is on the back, but you have the option to put the aggressive one uh, back here as well. So however you want to do it, they come with those. And it also comes with uh, mounts for your different optics and things that you uh, may have to configure, you know, the pistol with. So let's go ahead and pull this out, get this out of the way, and talk about the features on the F and X. Uh, starting at the front, it does come with a thread protector. Um, I'm going to be very careful with it right now. I don't know, somewhere uh, amongst shooting and all that kind of stuff, we were running suppressors on it. I think we've ran two or three on this one gun. And uh, somewhere along the line, we lost it. So I'm going to have to get a replacement. But that's no big deal. It, it does come with one, though. Uh, of course, I have the weapon light. It's a 1913-style Picatinny rail, uh, so pretty standard. It is serrated on the front of the trigger guard. You can't really see it with the weapon light, but uh, you can see you have an undercut here in the uh, in the frame under the trigger guard. Of course, we already talked about you know the aggressive type of pyramid uh, scheme that <laughs> that FN does. They do it on the FNS uh, as well, and uh, some people love it, some people hate it. I think it does you more justice than anything, especially when your hands start sweating. It really really locks into place. I don't need it so much back here though because it already does a really good job, I feel. Um, fully ambi control. So your magazine release is ambidextrous. Your uh, slide or your safety and decocker ambidextrous. Slide stop is ambidextrous. So uh, if you are a lefty, this is going to be a dream for you. Um, everything is fully functional um, on either side of the pistol. So however you want to run it. Um, it'll work for me the way. Uh, being a right-handed shooter, this really is, is low profile enough to keep it out of the way. So this doesn't really bug me. I mean, really, 
as big as this pistol is, when you look at the controls, they're really not that uh, fat. They really don't stick out that much from the frame. So they did a good job of keeping everything pretty, uh, pretty square there, you know, and keeping it close to the frame. Of course, it is a double to single action uh, action. <laughs> so basically, you have your double action first. This is a long trigger pull. Um, I'll show you the trigger and all the weights and everything after the shooting part of the review. Uh, you can see your takedown lever there. Again, it's very flush to the frame. The coloration is uh, something I really think looks good. It's kind of like the scars and, and, and how they look with the three-tone three, uh, three -tone type of flat dark earth. It just looks really solid. Polymer frame and then stainless steel slide and barrel. Uh, high night sights from the factory. So you can see through the red dot there. The red dot will probably be pretty dirty running suppressors on it, but um, high night sights, tritium, uh, very cool. Uh, front and rear slide serrations. So that's uh, also something that you get with this pistol. Uh, there is a ton of features on this pistol. Now let's go ahead and talk about the cost here really quick. Um, I paid 1200 bucks for this one, okay? Uh, that's pretty expensive for a gun for sure. But with the threaded barrel, with the night sights, um, with the 315 round magazines and everything else that comes with it, uh, I don't think you're that far away from, you know, taking a regular F and X um, and, and changing it to this. And if you were to do all that, I think, uh, I think you're actually getting a pretty decent deal there. Even though it is a polymer frame, uh, that's something some people do not like at all, but I think that you're getting actually a pretty decent deal with everything that you are getting. Uh, let's go ahead and show you, kind of, uh, a comparison. Uh, the closest thing I have is the SIG Legion. And the SIG Legion is not a small gun. And you can see, you know, really, you have a little bit of extra length on that slide. Uh, but really, the threaded barrel is what sticks out the most. And then when you put them on their backs, this is going to be kind of hard to do with the uh, red dot. But we'll put them like that. Uh, you can see, really... That kind of gives you a good idea of how big the FNX really is. I mean, you have a good inch on the uh, SIG Legion. Of course, the SIG Legion is 9mm, holds 15 rounds, but uh, overall, the FNX is a big, beefy gun uh, ready for some kind of action. <laughs> uh, concealed carry, I don't know about that, but uh, definitely a range gun outside the waistband, possibly, uh, if you're, you're somebody that wants to carry like that. The weight unloaded is 33.3 ounces all right so it is kind of uh, hefty uh, the overall length is 8.6 inches uh, the barrel length is 5.3 inches uh, the height is six and a half inches that of course is without the uh the red dot on it uh, msrp is 1349 made in america the thread pitch is the uh 0.578 by uh, 28 uh, you also have a cold hammer forge barrel stainless steel replaceable steel frames in the slide i mean when it comes to quality i don't think that you are getting anything less in this gun for sure uh, this thing has a lot of cool features now i did mention concealed carry it was something i was gonna consider carrying i even got a holster i think this is a kt defender uh, pretty nice holster they were at a decent price I bought it with the intentions of keeping the weapon light on there, so they actually molded it uh, to fit exactly with the uh, with the uh, TLR1. The problem is, is that this thing is just way too tight getting it in and out of the holster. Getting it in, it, it's really not that big of a deal. Getting it out is more of a big deal. I don't know if it's just a you know you have to wear this thing in, but it's Kydex. It should already be. Uh, what it is, you know, there shouldn't be any kind of flexing that I know of With kydex and it is just way too much. I'm not a stickler for scratches and stuff <clears throat> On my guns. I'm not you know that anal about it But when the holster is the only thing that has caused this thing to actually uh, scratch up that kind of gives me a little bit of an issue uh, So I'm not a huge fan to be honest with you of this holster. I think it's good quality and everything but it's just too much of a pain to try to get in and, in and out of the holster i think it's just way too tight it needs to be loosened up but there are no retention screws uh, for that so you don't have that option but 
I did try carrying it. Uh, because it hangs, you know, so low, I got another gun on right now, but because it hangs so low, you got to find something that's going to come down all the way to here uh, to be able to cover it. But if that's something you want to wear maybe outside the waistband, uh, if you live in one of those states, then, you know, go for it. Uh, it could be that option for you. I think in a better role, a range and definitely a home defense gun, especially if you get a suppressor to go on this thing, this thing is a, a beast of a, a home defense gun for sure. Let's go and break it down here really quick and then we'll get to some shooting. Lock it back, rotate your lever down, super easy to do too. It's not tight or anything like that. And it's gonna come right off of the, uh, right off the frame. Captive steel recoil spring, again, just quality. And then, of course, you're going to want to take the thread protector off. I don't know where mine is, so that's not a problem. And it's going to come right out. Look at that thing. Yeah, it is huge. Uh, big old 45. You can see it's dirty. We recently shot it. It actually does come with a really nice polished feed ramp right here. So uh, from the factory, that's pretty awesome. All right, so looking at the uh, inside here, you do have a uh, uh, firing pin block right there. Uh, pretty standard. And then on the inside, what I was talking about, the steel replaceable rails. Uh, shooting this thing suppressed, by the way, that's why it's this dirty. I really got to clean this thing up. But you have your replaceable rails right here. And I'm pretty sure these are replaceable as well. All steel construction. Very high quality. And, you know, from FN, I, you wouldn't really expect anything less. Putting it back together, you, of course, have to put the barrel in there. And the guide rod and spring slides in there just like that and then just made it to the frame it's much easier when you have the hammer back of course it probably will already be back just like that uh, like I said this is a dual uh, control right here so very easy to get to um, if you want to carry it cocked and locked you can do that or if you want to carry it in double action mode you have that option as well all right so let's go ahead and get to some of the shooting here we will see you guys in a minute, and then we'll talk about pros and cons. I'll show you that trigger, and uh, I'll give you my overall assessment of the FNX 45 Tactical. We'll see you guys in a minute. Hitting a little bit to the right, a little bit high on some of those shots, but I think I got this uh, pretty much figured out here with the sight picture.
rice. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Uh, as you can see, we had this uh, same kind of problem with the FNS uh, 9 compact that we did. Uh, the sight picture for me, you really have to, uh, to make sure everything is level across the top. I know that sounds ridiculous, but I have to pay extra special attention for whatever reason to these sights and make sure that I'm not uh, pushing or pulling um, something with that sight picture. I don't know if it's because it's suppressor height or uh, just FN sights in general. Uh, but it's nothing to do with the gun. It's just uh, it's just me and, and, and this these types of sights. I, I don't know what it is, but I don't really have a good explanation, <laughs> I guess is what I'm trying to say, but I wouldn't put that on the gun. Um, one thing I did notice is when we ran the suppressor, uh, it actually seemed to uh, be more spot on, especially when we ran the obsidian on this uh, gun. That thing, uh, it just made it up. Everything was really, uh, really awesome with this uh with this gun for sure but uh that's the only thing i wanted to mention about that you know i had a tendency to uh to push those uh, shots high into the right um, i don't think it has anything to do with the trigger really let me show you the double action pull it is a heavy double action for sure but it is it's pretty smooth um all the way back let me show you the reset right there and then the single action, you have a little bit of creep in the trigger, and then it breaks. So it's actually, the single action is actually really good. Um, nothing to complain about in that single action. Let's go ahead and test it, see where we're at. I don't even know if it'll pull uh, on the trigger scale for double action. Let's try it. Oh yeah, it pulled 11.2. 11 Let's try the uh, let's try double action one more time. See if we get the same thing. Ten pounds, eleven ounces. One more time. Ten pounds, twelve ounces. So right in that eleven pound range. Let's try the uh, single action. I got my light on there. Oh yeah, four pounds, 10 ounces. Four pounds, 12 ounces. Uh, so right there under five ounces for the single action. Uh, in comparison, I wanted to show you guys this because I feel this may be a question I get. The Sig Legion. Uh, let's see how this one does in comparison. I haven't shot this gun in a while. I really need to get it out and shoot it. 11 pounds, 2 ounces. Uh, one thing about the uh, SIG, I'm going to try the double action one more time here. 10 pounds, 12 ounces. So right in the 11, uh, or yeah, right in the 11 pound range as well. But one thing about this one is it is much smoother through the double action than this gun. All right, and it doesn't feel as heavy either. Let's try the single action. This is where the money is in this trigger. Three pounds, 15 ounces. So you're about a pound lighter. Uh, this gun to me is, is much easier to shoot. I, I prefer this sight picture. Um, I prefer um, other sights, you know, Trigicon HDs, sights like that. I prefer them. Uh, definitely over the FNX 45 tactical sights. I'm just not a fan of, of FN sights and the way they do them. Uh, but that's just me. That's just my opinion. Just something I wanted to uh, point out there for sure. So you have a decent double action. Kind of heavy. Not as smooth um, as the SIG Legion. It's not that bad. It just seems like it gets heavier and heavier and heavier. And I mean it just stacks and stacks and stacks. So... Um, just not a, a huge fan of that, but the single action definitely does a, a pretty decent job. Pros and cons. Let's go ahead and talk about it and end the video out. Uh, first of all, uh, this is an amazing home defense type of gun. Uh, if you're looking at something with uh, high capacity, um, something that you can run suppressed inside your home, something you can hook a weapon light up to with a red dot even, um, with night sights, uh, this gun, there's there's not a lot out there, I feel, that comes from the factory 
ready to do the job like this one does. I really give this thing a lot of credit. Um, FN didn't cheap out. They didn't give you, you know, standard set of sights. They, you know, they really, to me, it seems like they thought it through and they gave you everything you needed uh, to do the job, whatever job you might be doing. It comes with the uh, threaded barrel. Like I said, night sights, all that kind of deal. So it is a great suppressor host. If, you, uh, if you're if you looking to get into the suppressor game, uh, this is a gun you should definitely look at uh, as uh, as being your host for a 45 suppressor because this thing is just awesome. The weight and everything, it is heavy, but it does a uh, great job as far as the uh, the 45 round. Uh, it just handles it like a almost like a 9mm. I mean, there's such a great balance. You can tell there's a little bit more weight up top because you have a polymer frame, but it just it seems to balance out really well with the 45 round. Um, all the features that you get easy easy to shoot really it is once you get that trigger down um these sights i'm not a fan of of course but you know once you get the trigger and everything down uh this thing is really easy to shoot if you're looking to teach somebody on a 45 platform uh this might be a good option may or may not be it just depends on what you want fully ambidextrous for the for all the left-handed shooters and everything um even if uh something were to happen to your right hand you have every control right there uh ready to go uh, magazine button release all that it is uh, uh, definitely friendly to everybody <laughs> uh, just a great overall gun great home defense great um, at the range type of gun for sure uh, but there are some cons as well some people feel that with the polymer frame on a gun you know this expensive that you should get a steel frame gun um, you know it's going to add more weight i feel because uh, this is a pretty bulky gun but for its intended purpose, I would say a steel frame would probably um, add to the value a little bit, I guess is what I would say. You know, it does keep the weight down a little bit, but for an, a 33 ounce gun, you're already there anyways. You know, a steel frame, I don't think would make that big of a difference. It is expensive. For some people, $1,200 for a pistol, man, you know, that's just a lot of money. Um, and, you know, if you want to invest the red dot and then a... You know a weapon light you could be at two thousand dollars in a handgun in no time uh some of these uh red dots that are not the burris this is actually a pretty decently priced one uh but some of these things run five six hundred dollars so uh you can be up there in the money in no time with this thing shooting the fnx this is probably my biggest con um uh, i feel like we're pretty decent shooters now and something about this gun i'm just not on point like I am with other ones and it may just be practice it just may be a, a matter of uh, getting my sight alignment or whatever the case may be um, I'm just not the best shot with this gun and I, I can admit that it's just not me one thing I did notice too to be fair is that the sight is actually pushed over a little bit more to the right there um, so I don't know if that's throwing me off but it came from the factory like that I don't want to put all the inaccuracy on this gun. Uh, that's something I don't want to do. I'm just not as accurate with the with this gun or the FNS. That was another problem I had with the FNS is the accuracy for me uh, just wasn't as good. I don't think it's on the gun. It's definitely on me, but it's just something I wanted to point out. The trigger double action could definitely be cleaned up a little bit. Single action I think is just fine. Uh, but other than that, you know, there, there's a lot of good things with this gun. If you need a bigger gun for home defense or range or whatever, uh, this may be your ticket. And plus, I don't know if I mentioned 15 rounds of 45. That is very, very awesome. Uh, overall, I think it's a great gun. Pretty, you know, kind of pricey. Great suppressor host. Great for a home defense type pistol. Um, I would say it's worth the money. I think it's worth the money. You know, I'd rather have a steel frame and a gun like this, uh, but I think it is worth the money with everything it gives you. I don't know that you can take a regular 45, put every option on here like you have with the night sights, threaded barrel, uh, all that, and come out any cheaper. Maybe a little bit, but not much. So there you go. There's my opinion and review on the FNX 45 Tactical. Thank you guys for watching. Let me know what you think about this gun down in the comments below. We'll see you in the next one, and as always, hold them down.